Hello, hello, welcome to HimDev Development, where we are preparing the best tutorials to make your mobile application development easier and more efficient. Our goal for this tutorial will be create a draw for our application, use user accounts draw header and list style for draw, learn how to work with gesture detector, circle avatar, alert dialog widgets, and learn basic navigation between screens in the application, page routing. Let's go for it. First, we open our existing application from the previous tutorial and we open the file shop underscore page.dart. In the build method, especially in the scaffold widget, we define a new attribute draw and we set its value to a new widget shop draw. We need to create this widget first, so we add a new shop underscore draw.dart file to the components folder. We will create a shop draw class in it that will inherit from the stateless widget. In the build method of this widget, we will return the flutter draw widget. Draw can be any widget, but it is often best to use the draw widget from a material library that follows the material design specification. In the drawers hierarchy of widgets, we add a list view widget to the child attribute of the draw. We could define another way to organize additional item widgets into draw, but list view is useful because it allows users to scroll through draw if the content takes up more space than the screen supports. And we set draw padding to zero to remove any redundant space from draw. We will add the private underscore build draw header method to the list view widget to create the draw header widget. In this method, we will first return a draw header widget that has a child attribute in which we can render the entire draw header. However, we will just add here a text draw header for now. We set the draw header color to black using the decoration attribute. To see our text on the screen, we set it to white. We will go back to the shop page widget to import the shop draw class. Then we launch the application so we can see the changes in the app. On the top left you can see the hamburger icon which when clicked will display the draw. Since we do not want to render and calculate the layout of widgets on the draw header, we will use a standard way to create a custom draw header. So our method returns a user accounts draw header widget that has a predefined widget layout. We will define here several attributes for the user accounts draw header widget. The first attribute will be account name where we define the name of our store himdev fashion. We will wrap it with the text widget and set the text background color to black. We will also define another attribute, account email, and we set its value to info at himdev.eu. We launch the application and we can see that the name and email are in their place in the draw header. Another attribute will be current account picture, which represents either the user's photo or, in our case, the logo of our store. We will return the gesture detector to call this callback method. Gesture detector is a widget that detects gestures. In our case, we will be interested in the gesture of tapping at the logo of our store. We will define the logo of the store. To the attribute child of the gesture detector, which represents the hierarchy of other widgets, we will define a circle avatar widget to create a circle around our logo. We set the background color attribute to black and we set also the background image attribute to which we insert a network image widget that displays an image of our logo from the internet. We will test the functionality. We can see that our logo is displayed in the draw header. The last attribute we define for user accounts draw header will be a decoration attribute that will represent the background of the draws header. 
we put in it a box decoration widget that has an image attribute where we create a decoration image widget. The decoration image widget also has an image attribute. In this attribute, we insert the network image widget with the URL image for our header. To adjust the layout of the image for the entire header area, we define a fit attribute. We set this attribute to the value boxfit.cover. And now we can see that the header image covers the entire space. We will wrap the draw widget in a theme widget to change the style for the entire draw. Specifically, we change the canvas color, that is a draw's background color, and we set its value to blue. Rather than overriding everything, it often makes sense to extend the parent theme, and we can handle this by using the copy with method. We launch the application and we can see that the background of the draw has changed to blue. We will add an option to click on our logo. This is done by the gesture detector on tab attribute. And on the call of this callback method, we will display a dialog with a basic info about the store. To display the dialog, we use the flutter show dialog method. And we define here two attributes, build context and child. In the child attribute, we set the flutter alert dialog widget. For our dialog, we set the title attribute where we add a text widget with the name of our store himdev fashion. Then the content attribute where we add the basic info about the store. Finally, we define the actions attribute where we add the flat button widget, which will close the dialog. To press this button, the following method is called navigator.offcontext.pop. When a user opens a dialog, Flutter adds the dialog to the navigation stack. Therefore, if we want to close it, we call the navigator pop method to jump out of the last navigator path. We test the functionality. To add more items in the draw, under the draw header, we define the underscore build portfolio item method with the build context parameter in where we return the list tile widget. List tile is a single line of fixed height which usually contains some text as well as a leading or trailing icon. In our case, it will have the title attribute where we set the name to portfolio. Next, the attribute leading that represents the startup icon and we set its value to the icon representing the portfolio. Next, the attribute trailing that represents the end icon and we set it to the right arrow. Before we define the last attribute of user account's draw header, we add the private underscore build divider method right after the portfolio item in list view for draw. This method returns the divider widget, which is a thin horizontal line with padding on the sides. We will separate the portfolio item with it. We set its color to white. The last attribute we define here will be the onTap attribute. It is a callback method that is called when a portfolio item is tapped. First we call navigator.offcontext.pop. This command works just like with a dialog, so we jump out of the last path in the navigator, in our case from the draw widget. And then we call the command to switch the screens, in our case to switch to portfolio widget. We will call navigator again with a build context and this time we use its push method which has the root parameter. 
This parameter represents the new screen of our app, in our case the portfolio page widget. Navigator adds this widget to the navigation stack using the push method. What is important to note is that the call for a navigator pop command must be defined before switching the screen to another widget by the navigator push method. Otherwise, we will get an exception because we are already in the context of another widget. Under the pages folder, we will create a new file portfolio underscore page dart file. Here, we define the portfolio page class which will inherit from the stateless widget. In the build method of this class, we will return the scaffold widget to define an app bar widget so that we can navigate back in the navigator stack using the back arrow in the top bar. We will set the app bar title to portfolio value. To see something on this page, in the body attribute, we create a text widget with the text portfolio. And we align it to the center of the screen using the center widget. Then we go back to the shop draw class and import the portfolio page widget. Now we can restart the application and test the whole functionality. And with this is our fourth part of this first series of Flutter tutorials completed and of course you can find the complete source code on the GitHub as well as on our website himdeve.com where we have also a detailed description of everything we went through in this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you, bye bye.